Two of the more popular videos that I put up on my channel last year were about the Marshall DSL and the Marshall Vintage Modern. And probably the most frequent comment that I've received on both of those videos is, how would you compare the DSL to the Vintage Modern? Or how would you compare the Vintage Modern to the DSL? Whichever way around you want to phrase it. So I thought 2018 being a new year, it might be a good chance to have a listen to both of these side by side and to have a listen to the similarities and to talk through the differences and which one is going to suit your playing style and your rig. So the way I'll approach this, I'll use the same guitar. This is my PRS McCarty with Seymour Duncan Seth Lover humbucker pickups and a one mega ohm volume pot. Straight into the amp, going into a two notes torpedo captor, going into a two by 12 IR of a Zilla Super Fat Boy from the Own Hammer Heavy Hitters 2 collection, great sounding IR. I'm gonna use it so in order to do this, rather than twist every single knob and put every knob in the same position and AB the amps, I figured I would dial them into where I think the EQ sounds most appropriate for each channel and try to compare the difference in character between each of the two amps. Essentially to me, the JCM2000 DSL50 is like a refined version of the JCM800. You've got a couple of different options, namely you've got a green channel, which can do clean cleans all the way up to ACDC style crunch between the two modes. And then you've got a dirty channel, which is sort of classic 800 tones and beyond. Whereas the Vintage Modern is more like a modified Plexi or JTM45. If you took those two amps and added a master volume control to them, you'd essentially have the Vintage Modern. The DSL50 uses EL34 tubes and the Vintage Modern is using KT66s. And I believe there's four preamp tubes here and only three here. So rather than painstakingly AB each amp with the EQ at the same settings between each of them, what I want to capture with this video is the differences in the fundamental character and the gain structure and try to show off a little bit of the range of the EQ. So to my ears, the DSL is an expanded 2203 style amp, whereas the Vintage Modern is like a Plexi or a JTM45 that's had a master volume added. It has these two unique gain controls here that you need to balance out and the tone stack to my ears anyway, sounds fundamentally different to the tone stack in the DSL. So you would naturally set the EQ different between each amp if you were actually using these. And on the DSL, of course, we've got two channels, a green channel and a red channel with two modes each. The green channel can do really clean cleans all the way up to a pretty throaty crunch, whereas the red channels do the saturated compressed high gain stuff. I'll start with the DSL. I'll try to play the same riffs on both of them and you can make up for yourself based on these clips which amp would suit your rig best. So we'll start with the DSL. I'm on the green channel. I've got the treble and middle at around seven, the bass at around three, and I've got the bass shift in. This is on the OD1 mode. And here's the OD2 mode. You can already hear there's a little bit more noise going on. So moving over to the red channel, I've left the deep switch in. I've brought the bass up a little bit and I've brought the treble and middle down as I find this channel is naturally a little bit brighter than the green channel. This is on OD1 mode and I've got the gain only set to around three. So you don't really need to go crazy with the gain on the red channel. <laughs> Exactly the same thing on OD2. Now 
Now Marshalls normally have a bad rap for clean tones, but I happen to love the clean tone of the Green Channel OD1 mode on the DSL, and I've probably recorded more clean sounds with that than any other ramp in my life. So it's a little bit of a dark horse in those stakes. Furthermore, you can hear that as you go up through the gain modes and through the channels, you naturally get more compression, and you sort of get more of this high-end sizzle in there, which a lot of people complain about when they play these amps. It's like, you know, why does this amp sound so fizzy and I don't like it? You know, it doesn't sound smooth enough or something like that. However, you have to remember that that fizz and that sizzle is what helps a guitar stand out in a mix with a loud bass and loud drums. And sure, it might not be appropriate if you're trying to sound like Robin Ford or Larry Carlton, but if you're playing in a rock band and you're playing ACDC and you're playing UFO and you're playing, you know, Metallica or something like that, you need that high-end sizzle in there. And this amp has it in spades, which is probably why it's such a modern classic. Right, moving along to the Vintage Modern. The Vintage Modern tone stack, as I said earlier, is very different to the DSL, which has more of a 2203 style tone stack. With the Vintage Modern, this is a plexi style tone stack. So you need to turn the treble in the middle all the way up, basically. I've got them at around eight at the moment and use the bass very sparingly. I should have added earlier as well that I've got the present set to six on both of these. I just love seeing the presence to six on a Marshall. I think that's where it lives. Some people may disagree, but for the case of this demo, I've set it at six, which is, as I said, where I like it. Now, we've got these two gain controls here. They are called detail and body. And basically, I always like to run detail at least four notches higher than body. I feel that's where you need to set it with this amp. To get the right mix of cut and body, or detail and body, you know, they're accurately named when you describe it like that. So with those settings, we're going to have a listen to the low dynamic range. So we're going to start with the detail at noon and the body at around three. Let's have a listen to that. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna turn the detail all the way up and I've got body at six. This is more of that classic Marshall Crunch. <laughs> Low dynamic range, detail all the way up, body just past noon. That is instant classic Marshall territory. You know, that's the sound of the 70s to me. And you can do a lot with the treble control there. If I dial it back and I turn the mids all the way up, you get more of that sort of free Paul Kossoff kind of thing happening. addition here is that rather than the mid shift on the DSL, which I don't find very useful at all, it sort of takes out the body of the guitar, the part of the guitar that pokes out in a mix. So it sounds great when you're playing it in your bedroom, but doesn't really work in a mix too well. The Vintage Modern has a mid boost, and I just use this if I'm playing a Strat, I turn the mid boost on. If I'm not playing a Strat, which I'm not at the moment, I will turn the mid boost off. So let's do the same thing with the high dynamic range, and you know, this is the modern part of the Vintage Modern. This now sounds like a plexi that's been modded with an extra gain stage in front, which is getting more towards that 2203 kind of thing anyway. <laughs> Body at noon and the detail around two and a half. <laughs> I 
should note as well that I've got the master volume on the vintage bottom between 6 and 7 and this is where it really starts to smooth out and you get those KT66s cooking which is a big part of that vintage Marshall sound, right? Power tube distortion. And that's really nice with the Vintage Modern. It's a little bit smoother, it's a little bit more compressed, and you've got these beautiful playing dynamics. Like if I play really hard, the amp breaks up, and if I pick softly, it's almost clean. That's what I love about playing tube amps, it's the hand sensitive dynamics and the DSL doesn't have quite as much of that, it's like the preamps are a little bit more compressed, I'll give you an idea of what I mean right now. That's a very good example of what I was talking about with the touch dynamics. I've only got the gain at 2, 3 here and when I'm playing really softly it's still a little bit distorted as opposed to the sort of natural overdrive you get out of the vintage modern. One advantage of the DSL is that you can use this more of like a metal amp or a hard rock amp if you scoop out the mids and you really crank the gain. Whereas the vintage modern, just by account of its design, tends to get a little bit flubby. The DSL is nice and tight though, so check this out. This is with a guitar with path style pickups as well. You can also hear if I crank the treble in the middle and the green channel of the DSL, I'm getting quite close to the vintage modern. So here's an attempt to compare the DSL and the vintage modern for sort of balls out gain with a lead sound. I'll start with the vintage modern and then we'll swap over to the DSL. Conclusion, the Vintage Modern is essentially a modified Plexi, whereas the DSL is essentially a modified JCM 800 2203. The Vintage Modern is a little bit looser, it's a little bit rawer, it's great for 70s style tones, whereas the DSL does more of the 80s and 90s kind of thing. However, both amps have a significant overlap in terms of the tones that you can pull. The only difference being that you really have to have the Vintage Modern cranked up for it to come to life, whereas a DSL is a little bit more operable in the lower ranges of the master volume control. What did you think? Leave a comment, tell me which amp you preferred, if you liked both of them, if you didn't like either of them, and which one you either own or would like to own. And of course, if you're digging the content, please hit the subscribe button.